guys, and this is my second YouTube video, and it is on a bookshelf tour of my bookshelf so far in October 2014. First on my bookshelf is The Band Played On, um, story of Jack Hughes' life, the violinist on the on the Titanic as it sunk, um, and about his family, and how much he was loved and betrayed by the captain. Um, second, you've got Excalibur by um, Bernard Cornwall but it's got a nice map in the beginning and it's quite a book I never got round to reading any of it really but and it was quite cheap back then for 16 and it's quite a big book when it was made um, and you've got uh, 65 spine chillers with stories such as um, the Raven and stuff from Pitting a Pendulum it, by Edgar Allan Poe. It's got E.F. Benson, um, Ramsey Campbell, Sasky, um, Stephen King stories in there as well, and it's illustrated. So it's a nice cover, so I thought I'd get it. Got it as part of um, the man gave it to me as a gift. You've got Elliot O'Donnell's Great Ghost Stories quite average size but it's large, large print, lots of it, bit old, they have a price on it, oh, 7 95 but it was 20p in a charity shop, so again, my name got it for me, got one of my favourite books, the complete illustrated short stories by Sher um, Arthur Colin Doyle and Sherlock Holmes, so nice bit of illustration, quite small writing though, but I've read a few of his stories out of it, but other than that, I haven't got around to reading the rest, only stories what I've seen on the TV, I've read, so, he got vanished, and um, I found this book, but it's not very big, the uh, writing's quite large, so, I'd say you probably fit into a small book like that, if he made the print smaller, but it's about some woman who's caught turned up in a morgue and then when people come to examine it, it disappeared. The body's got up and gone, disappeared somewhere. And you've got um, these three, what I brought at the church fair. So you've got, not in the flesh, but it sounds interesting, man in a wood, um, walking his dog, a uh, life's a body. A, a body as the Chief Inspector of Wetsford um, is informed later, buried ten years ago, and the post-mortem cannot reveal his precise course of death. So it's probably a murder or something out there. <laughs> and um, Pigeon Summer, 1930s, um, young Mary loves helping her father look after ration pigeons. So again, I've read some of that then together because it's a bit of a kiddie style book. And as you can see, my unicorn statue, which I thought, okay, sounds interesting. Hunting Unicorns by Bella Pollen. Turns out this book has nothing to do with unicorns or anything of such. It's more a story between brother and brother. And they're coming on to one of my favourite childhood authors. You've got Anthony Horowitz, Stormbreaker, Point Blank, Skeleton King, Eagle Strike, Scorpio, Archangel and Snakehead is the newest one. Um, again, I didn't like Stormbreaker when I saw the film, and I've read some of the book, and I've read some of um, Skeleton Key, but I really didn't enjoy it, so I gave up on both of them. But I bought the rest anyway to complete the collection, because I only paid something like 10p each. A car boot, and then you got Public Enemy, number two. Falcon's Maltese, I've read this book. It's brilliant. It took a while, because I was probably like... 12 at the time and it's quite a big book and I lose focus easily but it's a really really good book I enjoyed that one quite funny because it's Diamond Brothers but again that's his best sort of series you've got South by South East I've never read it I've got it even that's a kids book I'll probably get round to reading it soon you've got the three of diamonds or three of his books um, it's got um, the French Confection, The Blurred Man, and I Know What You Did Last Wednesday, and um, all brilliant books, I've read them all. 
I've read them ones with audio books. You've got Gruesome Grange and Return to Gruesome Grange. Well, it's a bit dusty because I have it on the shelf. But I haven't got round to reading them. Again, Granny and the, and the Switch in both books in one book. You've got the Switch again. Cool, I did them separate and then got the Devil and His Boy twice because I thought I didn't have it, so I re brought it. Got the official um, illustrated guide to Twilight, because I like the films and the books, they're good. Um, you've got the Secret Circle, I haven't started reading it, I've just borrowed it from my partner. My second shelf, um, I'm going to start this in this time. Um, you've got my favourite Anthony Horowitz on the top shelf. But you've got one of these books down here, what I'll probably put on after the video is finished. Uh, the Blurred Man, one of my favourite books as a child of all time. It's just so funny. It's only five chapters, it's like 90 pages long. But it's definitely worth the read. Um, without, um, here's the caption off the back. My name is Mr Carter, he says. Last he spoke with an American accent. Joe Carter, and I've got him from Chicago, and I've got a problem. So it sounds interesting, so I thought I'd give it a read. It looked interesting. But it's hilarious, some of the jokes were in it and puns. Um, <coughs> you've got Twilight, New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, and short uh, Life of Bree, Hearn, and Tamma. Um, all Twilight series, and one weren't made into the film. And we've got, so I've done college, done science, so my partner brought me this as a joke. It's a present, and um, got this myself from a charity shop to go with my countryside management at college few years ago. And then you've got um, Philosopher's Stone, Chamber of Secrets, Prisoner of Azkaban, uh, Goblet of Fire, and that's all in one box set. And then you've got The Order of the Phoenix, um, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hallows, all by J.K. Rowling in the Harry Potter series. Well, if you didn't know who it was by then, where have you been living for the last God knows how many years? And you've got Alan Zenoff's uh, Boy Nobody. It's um, a spy book. Who is this boy nobody? It says, and look at the awesome colour of the page. It says red. So, probably symbolising blood or something, because he's a spy. Um, and we've got the book I'm currently reading I Learn the Happy Ever After. Well, it seems really good so far. I'm speed reading that one. And then you got one I picked up thinking it was going to be like a fiver, but they said 40p because it got damaged. But I can't, the only damage on the book is that dirty black mark. And other than that, it's fine. It's um, Jesus and the Gargoyles. It's part of a series, but it, I don't know what series it's part of, but it's quite old. 1990, I think it is. This book originally came out. It's hardback, and I don't like reading hardback books, so it gives me a cramp in my thumbs. But I thought I'd buy it anyway and give it a go. Um, in my previous video, as I said, one of my favourite books of all time, brilliant, best read I've ever had, um, The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. I haven't read any of his other stuff yet, because my sister came in my room and took all of the books I borrowed of her, was by John Green. Um, Shock of the Fall, I was reading this with an audio book, I don't like the writing in it, it's the, it's the font, it goes blurry on my eyes. and. So far, I probably got about chapter 3 or 4 and thought it was a bit boring, but that's just the voice on the audiobook, so I'm going to give up with that for a while. And probably when I forget the voice of the person who's reading it, I'll read it myself. And you've got a book I got lent a few years ago, probably while I was in year 8 or 7, 7 or 8. And um, I should be in like year 20 now, so years on, Doctor Who like the truth behind it, the science behind it, so um, how we could regenerate like time laws and how Daleks climb the stairs. Um, a book I thought had a beautiful cover, I like the black cat one better than the white cat cover, Doctor Sleep by Stephen King, I still haven't got round to reading it because it's quite a big book, but the chapters are short because they have um, chapter 1, 2, 3 and 4 on one page. Um, but yet again, it looks like a good book. Well, I brought this because I love Dad's Army. Home Guard Trainer Manual. It's got a few jokes and pictures of like 
people writing in it. So like Fraser, how to make um, hedgehog. One large hedgehog, new potatoes, mince, um, some herbs, green beans, butter, an egg, shallots and white wine and mud. So it's just a bit of a jokey book. It's really good actually. Um, <coughs> and then you've got Sherlock Holmes, the mammoth new book of Sherlock Holmes Adventures. It is um, fan fiction of the old Sherlock Holmes, not the new one. Well, it's a shame. Um, again, another church book I brought at church, um, Sale, The Boneyard. It looked really interesting. Um, it's a simple job, um, but a body, um, nothing comes through the body farm ever. So, it's probably about zombies or something, I never got round to reading that. It's a church thing. <coughs> and this is also from the same thing, but it looks really interesting. I like this sort of Victorian Edwardian ghost stories like Edgar Allan Poe and all that lot. It's quite a small print and short stories, like Telltale Heart. It's got years, like Edgar Allan Poe, 1809 to 1849. So I thought I'd give that a go. I love that Edgar Allan Poe's poems and short stories. Another book I got then and um, never got round to read it. It's called 0 0.4 It's a Brave New World. Um, some guy finds some old tapes, so it's his interviews on them pretty much. And then one I saw an audio book onto the internet, so I thought I'd buy it and read along with it, and I never got round to it. The Call of the Wild. It's only a short book, but they reckon it takes three hours to read with an audio book, so I didn't bother I'd read it myself. Um, then one of these scary type books, Haunted Brighton, because I live near Brighton. It's got all like the haunted places like the pavilion and footsteps in tunnels and um, Dome Pavilion Theatre that one is. And you've got Poltergeist on, at King's Road. And you've got all hotels and buildings like that. And the like, none what meant to haunt the tunnels. That's my second shelf. My third shelf, um, book for boys, um, how to do almost everything, dangerous book for boys, dangerous uh, book for boys, things to do, and that one's things to know. So those are pretty much the same, just different styles, and that one's facts and stuff. And you've got this one, the phantom hitchhiker, and the decoy ducks, just stories and stupid things like... Um, short truthful stories like someone thought they saw something a hook but it weren't it was just a coat hanger or something then you've got Alan Titchmarsh's books Animal Instincts and Mr McGregor both interesting never got round to read them I read a bit of Mr McGregor uh, Diary of Jack the Ripper I would read it but uh, if as soon as I open the pages, all the pages fall out, you have to put them in order again, so I won't ever read that probably. Uh, Q Joe, Stephen King book, again, never read it. Stephen King stuff's not really interesting to me, but. But Watership Down, it's old, yet again, another childhood book like I got when I was a baby. It was just passed on for the family. See, it was only worth 90p, but now if you went and buy that in a shop, it would be like four or five quid, maybe six quid. But I can't get back in, I was at this full part. <laughs> um, Oliver Twist, again, never read it, but Charles Dickens, I like classic stuff like that. One of my favourites, Goodnight Mr. Tom, loved it. Just so brilliant, loved the film, TV film as well. Um, we've got Haunting Tales. But it's got stuff like, uh, I'll tell you some authors were in it, Roald Dahl, John Gordon, Ted Hughes, Alison Prince, but they're all quite short stories of this horror for younger people, it's probably better. Um, this, again, I stuck a stick on it as a kid, wish I didn't, couldn't get off, um, Rex by Jewish Stranger. But again, it looks like a quite interesting book, but I never got round to read it because I was young at the time. You've just got some little stupid book about Doctor Who, and then like one or two chapters of a new series of books, The Ultimate Guide to Sci-Fi Literature, but never got round to read that. I had a flick through the Doctor Who side, I've read that, but not the sci-fi one. Uh, Simpsons Quiz, again, just have, I thought it'd be fun to have. 
um, Cyril Fletcher's ver um, verses, they're good. Like, um, some in here, like Mary had a little lamb, she also had a bear, sometimes you see the lamb, but you never see her bear. The stupid, like, lions. Complete Book of Fortune and how do people do fortune telling, like, secrets revealed, like, reading tea leaves and reading palms. I got told, um, this book was good, James Herbert's 48, Hitler dis got, uh, discovers he's got an own type of blood group, just him, called 48, though he finds a thing that kills everyone without the blood group 48, so he's the only one and his selected friends are the only one surviving. You've got Jurassic Coast by Professor P. And address Co. So by P. J. Davison. So it's based on him. Um, I brought it for a pound, but it's signed by P. J. Davison itself in blue pen. But it's a bit of a kiddie book. I just brought it because it was signed. Um, and you've got War Horse and Blue Cat. Both the same sort of book, different authors. War Horse by Michael Moore and Blue Cat by Robert Westhouse. Um, seems good. Never read it, but War Horse, I think I've read some of that one. I read this on the way back from Wales once, what's pretty good, Hit inside Hitler's bunker, so it looks pretty interesting. So I've read some of it, and yeah, it is pretty good, but I got back from Wales and put it down, forgot about it, to be honest. Um, the Last fart, Fight in Tolly, not The Last Fight in Tolly, um, it's the life of Harry Pitch, um, he died in 2009 and born in 1898. So I thought I'd give that a go, but never got round to it. So it just goes back on my shelf with everything. Uh, the Lion, Witch and Wardrobe, as you can see down um, on my bottom shelf, I've got the rest of the Lion, Witch and the Wardrobe um, series. But as a box set. Um, you've got The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Loved the cartoon adaptation of the film. That's brilliant, so I thought I'd give that a go. Wind in the Willows, I keep it for um, personal, because it's like a family heirloom, but I've got a proper version, what I would read down on the next shelf. So you've got the Bernuda Triangle, Tales by Edgar, uh, The Mystery and Imagination by Edgar Allan Poe, and then you've got Dreams and Magic, Strange Encounters, Wisdom, uh, uh, Visionaries and Mystics. Mind Secrets, all part of a set but not a complete, I don't know what order they go in so I'll just put them on my shelf because I will get around to read them one day. Uh, Children's War, um, based on the evacuees of World War II, if so I can get it out. There, so again, it's quite interesting, I like my World War II stuff. And you've got Dad's Army. The story of the classic TV show, um, Trotters, Way to uh, Millions, so have become a millionaire, but it's a joking book, um, The Trotters Way, from Only for Horses, and Dream Team, a book about Only for the Horses. Um, the next half I'm going to go down to do, because then it's easier. Um, you've got the maze when I'm on Boggan of my partner, Shannon. Um, still need to read it, I want to read it before the 10th so that I can um, see the film, but I want to read the book first. You've got uh, The Jungle Book, Alice's Adventure in Wonderland, Treasure Island, Railway Children, Dr. Doolittle, uh, Hounds of Baskervilles, Swallows and Amazons, The Secret Garden, uh, Adventures of Tom Sawyer, again, because I've got it up there, uh, Robinson Crusoe, Anna Green Gables, Christmas Carol, Dracula, Heavy Gun. I started reading, got about two chapters in, and thought I can't read this at night. It takes too much energy to use, you have to focus on it, you can't be dying to sleep. I'll just move this chair so I can sit down on it. Um, Pinocchio, um, 2000 Leagues Under Sea. Well, funny story about Pinocchio. Everyone calls it Pinocchio, except my dad who calls it Pinocchio. Um, moving on, you've got 2000 Leagues Under Sea here. Yeah. I Captured a Castle, it seems a good book, I haven't read it yet, but I need to get around to reading it someday. Uh, Squish Family Robinson, Kidnapped, 
Wind in the Willows, I started reading, need to read more of it though. Um, Gulliver's Travels, didn't like the film, the story, it's just boring, but it's all part of a collection from, um, I think it's a Daily Mirror. Um, Black Beauty, Just William, Wizard of Oz, Peter Pan, Bed, uh, The Borrowers, uh, Scarlet Pimpernel, need to read that, I love the story and the backstory of it, so I'll best get around with reading it someday, because it's uh, about the French Revolution, I'm interested in that sort of thing. Ballet Shoes, probably will never read. Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, um, another Arthur Conan Doyle book, The Lost World, Bed Bobs and Brooms, it's a brilliant film, Disney film, must read the book someday, probably soon, because it's one of my favourite Disney films. What's well, not a cartoon? Um, Indian in the cupboard. Again, looks interesting. Little House on the Prairie. Three Musketeers. Uh, Rip Van Winkle. Um, Little Mermaid. Prince and the Pauper. We've got Rock. Um, Five Hundred Miles Walking seems interesting, but the writing's so small. I need to wait till I get uh, my strong contacts before I can read it. Or a new pair of glasses. Uh, Lord of the Rings, I started reading, but it's just heavy going. And I was discussing it today with a friend at the church, and he said, You can't read it all at once, it's just too heavy going and too much detail. And you've got uh, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Two Towers, but the act's really heavy going. He stopped reading it halfway through because he couldn't focus. And then, Book and Board of My Sister, Peter James, The Possession, based in Brighton, so I thought I'd give that a go. And it's quite interesting, just dialogue at the moment, so it's a bit. Move that PlayStation controller. I'm going on the next shelf, my last shelf, got the Beatles. There's a picture, but pretty much of everything. It's quite nicely illustrated. I'll get it out. So you've got this, and you've got all the pictures, like the Dark Days of the Beatles, and Hard Days Night movie fact file. Um, pictures and of their like, posters and tickets and facts about the songs and who the song was written about. It's hard to get back in the You've got uh, Life of John Lennon. It's quite a heavy gun book, but I used to collect Beatles stuff, so uh, I've got a box out in, under my house in the basement of Beatles stuff and Doctor Who stuff. Um, again, I've got uh, Shout the True Stories of the Beatles. got that from my aunt for Christmas a few years ago. Palm reading for beginners. I would never read it because it's just one of those books right there because I thought it would be interesting to look at. Um, facts. This is a really good book but probably won't be able to get it out. <laughs> the world's greatest books of useless information. So stuff like um, um, customs and tradition. Traditions. In Iceland, tipping a restaurant is considered an insult. So never tip anyone at, in Iceland. It's an insult to people. Wait, it won't go back in now. Put that in the wrong place as well. Um, two books have got as a baby, but it's got um, my name in it and stuff like my first hair. But this one's custom made, so it has my name. It's called. Um, <laughs> It probably won't come out. Prince Lewis and Princess Amanda. And you got my book of the Beatles. It's just um, chords for guitar. And you got more Shakespeare, the Shakespearean woodnuts. It's back to front because you normally have it the other way on the shelf, but it's easier to get the books out that way. Danny Champion of the World and this um, rolled old box set. Yeah. With Matilda, Danny Champion of the World again, Ezio Trot, The Draft and Penny, and me, George's Marvelous Medicine, Charlie and Charlie Patchy and Twit, Going Solo, uh, James and Giant Peach and the Witches. I hated The Witches as a film, like this scared me as a kid, so I never watch it. Um, but Ezio Trot's a funny book, I read it the other week. George's Marvelous Medicine and The Twits, all brilliant books. But I really enjoyed them, even though they're kid books and I shouldn't be reading them at my age, but they're really interesting and funny. We've got Doctor Who, um, The Dark Smith Legacies, I've never read any of them. But 
because I've collected all the few stuff I've got them anyway as a gift. You got my Narnia box set was about ninety pounds, but I got it cheap apparently. But I got given it as a gift, but apparently I got it cheap. And I got the magician's nephew, Lionel Witch in the Wardrobe, <coughs> Awesome His Boy, Prince Caspian, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, Silver Chair, what the cover interests me, it's got um Black Knight on it, so I might give that a go. And the last battle. Um, and you go on to my some of my new books. Uh, the Wicker Handbook and the Spellbound. What's a few witchcraft Wiccan spells? Cause I am pagan. With but studying Christianity, so I study in both really. You got the Celts because I like Celtic stuff. And it goes into background of paganism in my family. You've got folklore myths and legends of Britain, so there's a few local ones in there for me, from like uh, Brighton and Hove. You've got SAS Survival Guide, you've got Miller's, um, this one's interesting, I was looking at it last night to see if I could see everything of my stuff in there, what I collected. I haven't had a proper look through, but it has stuff like um, Tron and Star Wars, these are all collected games, and go on to different sections like Bubblegum, and confectionery like cigarette cards and stuff. And back here you've got paperback books like War of the Worlds, um, brought. Um, you can sell it for ten to fifteen dollars. Um, pounds, sorry, and fifteen to twenty-two dollars now because it's worth money, but not a lot. Some of the stuff in there is worth hundreds of pounds, but I can squeeze that back on. Now I've got, um, that's it.